Visit TheHonestCarpenter.com and get your home-related questions answered by a trade expert. Hey everybody, I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com and in this video I'm going to show you how to replace just a couple top sections of handrail like these two sections here. I've had a little bit of rot, obviously some deterioration water's got in, ruined that treated wood. So I'm going to take about a 10 foot section off here and about a 16 foot section off over here, get those replaced and uh, I'll show you how that's done. To start this repair, I just take something like a 16 ounce claw hammer and hit the underside of the handrail uh, kind of up towards me carefully. You could use a little mini sledge to do that. That loosens some nails. Here you can see some nails were already loose in the corner boards. I just pry them up with the claw of the hammer. The point is to remove all the fasteners that are holding the handrail down. So start with the easiest ones. Uh, and these ones in the corner were pretty bad, pretty deteriorated. If any fasteners are really fighting you, you can use a cat's paw, this thing here, a pretty cheap tool running about 15 bucks or something. That you can gouge out the nail heads and uh, once you get them pried up a little bit, you can just pull them out with the claw hammer. Here you can see where I've removed all the nails. They were all fastened into this horizontal rail that uh, connects the balusters. Um, there were a few that were in posts instead of rails. To get these, sometimes you gotta use a bit more leverage. So I use a large screwdriver, what we call a demolition screwdriver. Sometimes I tap it in if I have to. This gives you a bit more prying power. And when you get that handrail separated from the horizontal rail a little bit, uh, like I've just done here, you can take your hammer again, drive the handrail back down real hard, and there you see the head of the nail pops out. You can pry it out. But you just kinda do what you have to until you can get all the nails pulled out. And if a couple are left, you can eventually lever up the whole board and just pop out those last few like I've done here. Then I set the separated uh, handrail aside and you can tell some of the really uh, rusted nails were still stuck in the horizontal rail. I don't even bother trying to get them out because they're just gonna break. I actually just drive them down until they're flush with the surface of that lower rail there. You just kind of embed them with your hammer uh, and that gets them out of the way. Check the whole rail to make sure that you don't have any high spots left. This weird little thing was something that somebody added so they could put a routed detail on the end of the handrail. It's an odd thing to do, but I left it there for a minute because it lets me uh, start the next step. I can hook onto it and pull our measurement. So I'm pulling all the way out to the long point of the miter where it meets the other board. You can see I'm pulling something like 163 and a half inches. Check your tape when you do this, make sure it's not sagging because if it sags too much, it can throw your measurement off. Uh, but I pulled a good measurement there. And here I'm actually gonna mark it a little bit longer on the two by six treated stock that I'm gonna use. This way I can start by putting the miter on. And this will give me a really good surface to hook onto. So there's the miter on a slightly longer board than I need. Now I can draw out and transfer that like 163 and a half mark. And uh, you see, I've got like just a few inches to play with there. Uh, I just put a little crow's foot on it and cut it with my miter saw. Before I fasten the board in place, I have to round over the edges because uh, whoever did the original handrail insta installation put a little 3 8 round over. So I put my 3 8 round over bit into, uh, I got a Bosch router here. It's like a three horsepower router. And I just use it to ease the edge. This is the fastest way to do this. Don't try to do it with the sand or anything. You want a really uniform round over. And you see I went ahead and round over put a round over on the end so I don't have to do a silly little block or something like uh, the, the last person tried. Uh, but I have all the surfaces done. I go ahead and test fit it in place. You can see it meets up with the, uh, the other board in a miter the way I want it. I do just a little bit of an overhang here to the inside of the railing. And then I do a pretty decent size overhang near the house just because that's what was there before. I like to be consistent. Now I'm gonna use a drill a uh, Hitachi drill with a 1 inch, 1 8 inch bit to pre-drill my screw locations. And I'm gonna drill directly down into that horizontal handrail. That's mostly what we're gonna attach to there, the horizontal rail. And uh, then I switch over to my driver and I actually countersink my pre-drilled hole a little bit just with the same bit that I'm gonna drive the screw. So I put a two and a half inch exterior grade screw in and use my uh, DeWalt 20 volt driver to go ahead and set that. It's fastened down into the horizontal rail. I, I countersink just a little bit so the head's just below the surface. And all I've done is tack that board in place. Now I can jump over and start to remove the board that's gonna meet it. It's repeat the same steps, 
pop out nails, get the big screwdriver in there, and use my hammer to just pry this thing up carefully. You don't need to go crazy when you're prying. I don't like that much force, but I got that out of the way. Now I can hook onto the long point of the board that I just put in place and pull to this scarf joint that I have here. You see, I'm getting something like 117 and 5 eighths for that measurement. So once again, I go ahead and put the miter on because this gives me a good place to hook my measurement from. Flip the board around, draw out from the long point with my tape and mark where our, we're gonna have our scarf miter. To do this, I stand my board up and cut down through it here, just like that. And that's gonna create miter. It's kind of a bevel on the end of the board here. It's gonna meet that scarf overlap. But before I can put it in place, there was a really weird situation here. The balusters all were a little bit long. I think they got added after the fact, after the deck was built. I had to come through with a, a sawzall and cut all these things down. It was a pain, but it got done. Um, set my board in place and did the same thing where I'm just, just tack it with a couple screws. And now looking up, you can see that I got the positioning of the board. The scarf uh, overlapped really well. That looks good. And I'm actually going to put a couple fasteners through that. And another place I'm going to fasten is the corner. The miters will open up on treated lumber as things dry out. I like to pin it from both directions with two and a half inch screws. I pre-drill these holes, then I sink my fasteners. You see that it really drilled that corner in tight. That's exactly what I want. Uh, so when those things are done, I can go ahead and put all my fasteners in. I pre-drill all these locations and you can tell I'm putting two fasteners down into the post. Any post that's standing up uh, is a con another connection point. And I put three down here at the end. Um, and then I just run down the line. It's really good to do things in this production method. Uh, do all your drilling at once, then set all your fasteners just with your fingers, and then go ahead and come through and drive them. It speeds things up this way. You're not constantly switching tools. Um, and here you can see them sinking into the vertical post. And I just continue on down the line. Um, you can set, set and drive all your fasteners in like a minute doing it this way. Here you can see a couple extra connection points near the end. Anything that I think is liable to move, I, I will often go ahead and throw in another fastener right there. So that board's done. The other board is fastened in place and uh, everything's looking pretty good. Here you can see where I did um, three extra fasteners at that scarf joint. And after that, we're all wrapped up. Here's the ground level view. Everything looks good. So that's how you attach handrails. Thanks for watching the video. And if you enjoyed it, please hit like and subscribe below. Thanks. We're now offering live video consultations and phone consultations to homeowners nationwide. To get your most important home-related questions answered by a trade expert, just visit thehonestcarpenter.com.